Eating clean may be part of your New Year's resolution, but what about eating clean meat? What you're seeing on your screen may look like ground chuck, but no animal was harmed making it. Instead, this beef was grown from animal cells. The result? Meat without the animal, antibiotics, or waste. In his new book, Clean Meat, author Paul Shapiro explores what he hopes could revolutionize the way we eat. The book is published by Simon & Schuster, a division of CBS. Shapiro wants clean meat to spark a global conversation that shows us how we can have our meat and eat it too. And Paul Shapiro joins me now on set. Paul, thanks so much for being here. Great to be with you, Tanya. So we are not quite at the place where we can buy this clean meat, correct? How far away is that moment? Clean meat should be hitting the market within years, not decades. And this really used to be considered more science fiction, but indeed, it is now science fact. And there's a whole host of startups that are racing to commercialize the world's first ever meat and milk and eggs and leather and other animal products that, as you correctly point out, are grown from animal cells rather than from animal slaughter. So go into a little more detail about how that is done. So imagine taking a tiny sesame seed sized biopsy from an animal's muscle tissue. You put that biopsy inside of a cultivator where those cells, which would grow into muscle inside of the animal's body, think they are still inside the body. And then they grow into muscle exactly as they would in the animal's body outside of the body and what that gives us the chance to do is to produce real meat that is much safer to eat and takes far fewer resources, not to mention less animal welfare problems too. Right, so go into a little bit more, if you would, the advantages as you see it of this clean meat. Well, first and foremost, it takes far fewer resources to produce clean meat than conventionally produced meat. You need vastly less land, less water, less oil, and far fewer greenhouse gas emissions. But it is also just literally cleaner. So it's called clean meat because like clean energy, it's cleaner for the planet. But it's just literally cleaner. So think about it. Right now, we are warned to treat raw meat in our kitchens almost like toxic waste because it has feces on it. E. coli, salmonella, campylobacter, these are intestinal pathogens that can sicken us if we don't cook the crap out of our meat, literally. But can I just inter interrupt for a second? Because I think that there are some scientists who say that even creating this clean meat in a lab does not eliminate the danger of contaminated meat because bacteria could still be in the cells, correct? Well, or there's absolutely no way to eliminate all risk. Your own hands can infect meat just by touching it. But when you're dealing with the biggest problems of conventional meat, like E. coli, salmonella, campylobacter, those are intestinal pathogens. With clean meat, you're not growing intestines at all. You're just growing the muscle that you want. So there is no risk of those type of intestinal pathogens that are the biggest problems from a food right. safety but perspective. But it can't completely eliminate all, um, all diseases that could develop in the meat, right? No, and nothing ever will. Right. But, clean, but food safety issues are about reducing risk, right. not eliminating it. And with clean meat, you have a much safer product, which is one reason why food safety advocates are so enthusiastic about it. All right, now tell me though about the cost of this. Obviously, it costs a lot right now to produce? How much does it cost to produce a pound of clean meat right now yeah. as we speak? Well, the first burger ever produced in 2013 that was eaten and consumed in London had a price tag of around $300,000. Uh, <laughs> but in the four or five years that have transpired since then, the cost has come down by way over 80%. And in fact, now we are making uh, clean meatballs for a comparative bargain of perhaps only around $1,200 a pop. <laughs> so it is not yet ready for commercialization, but these companies are racing to that point and their costs are dropping like a rock. Right. I mean, the first iPhone that was produced cost billions of dollars and now a lot of us are walking around with them in our pockets. So right. you can see how this industry, which has only been around for a few years, will continue lowering that cost to the point where it will be cost competitive with conventionally produced meat. Right, now what about animal farmers? Is this the sort of thing where you see a future that, well, sorry, this it doesn't include animal farmers? There are so many problems with raising animals for food, from antibiotic overuse to global warming to animal cruelty and other environmental problems. And so being able to divorce meat production from livestock raising offers huge benefits for the planet, for public health, for animal welfare, and more. But yes, there will be transitions in the agricultural marketplace, right. just in the same way that there are transitions in pretty much every marketplace when a new technology disrupts. So very few of us are mourning the loss of video stores as we're binge watching our Netflix. Right. Uh, but there was an impact on the economy 
for those who are running video stores. Mm -hmm. Those who are involved in animal farming, though, are now starting to see their writing on the wall. In fact, agriculture giant Cargill has already invested in a clean meat company, Memphis Meats. And just last week, one of Europe's largest poultry producers invested in an Israeli clean meat company called Super Meat. So there are a whole host of changes happening in the agriculture sector now where these meat giants see that the future will involve clean meat production and they view it as an opportunity rather than a threat. Yeah, look, there are plenty of people who became vegetarians because they don't like the way animals are treated in the agriculture industry. So I'm sure there are many people that would welcome the return to meat if they felt that it was humane. How much energy does it take to produce this clean meat? So there are varying studies that show differing results on this particular point. But what's clear is that when you don't have to raise an entire animal and you can just grow the meat that you want, it takes a lot fewer resources. We're not yet at the point where life cycle analyses on these are going to be accurate reflections mm -hmm. of how clean meat will be produced once it's commercially viable. But the analyses do show right now far fewer resources, and that's one of the reasons why so many environmentalists are really enthusiastic about this product. All right, let's get down to brass tacks, Paul. What does it taste like? <laughs> <laughs> well, in writing this book, Queen Meat, I was fortunate enough to eat all types of queen animal products, beef, duck, liver, uh, fish, and more. And unsurprisingly, because clean meat is meat, guess what? It tastes like meat. Really? <laughs> yes. Exactly the same. So if you yeah. did a blind taste test, a real burger and a clean uh, meat burger, you would not be able to tell the difference. I wouldn't have. However, I would say that they are both real burgers in the right. same right. way that uh, that we have ice that is produced through refrigeration rather than naturally formed ice. They're both still ice. One is just produced through technology and the other is produced in nature. <laughs> the, but they're the same product. They're just ice. Right. And so the same is so with this. It's real meat just without animals. So it's not an alternative or a substitute, it is real meat produced without animals. And so with a blind taste test, you couldn't tell the difference. I don't think I would have been. I didn't do that, but right. I, I don't think I would have been able to. But I right. admit that maybe right. there's a better judge who would do that. It would be fun. Next it, time we yes. have you on, you'll have to bring the product with you. We'll um, all taste it, everybody in the room. and we'll <laughs> I would love that, Tanya. <laughs> That'd be great. Paul Shapiro, thanks so much for coming to see us. It's my pleasure. Thank you, Tanya. <laughs>